Back in 2020, the RTX 3080 was introduced, before the whole mining craze, before all of our GPUs were disappearing. The RTX 3080 showed impressive performance and it still puts up really good numbers to this day. That's why it's interesting to see them going for only $400 on the used market. I got this for $550 back in October of last year, so these cards have dropped significantly in price. But why are they so freaking cheap? I wouldn't really call it cheap necessarily, but it could be because of this graphics card. When the 6800 XT launched, AMD really struck back at Nvidia because they offered that very similar performance for $50 less than what Nvidia was asking. Performance is obviously excellent, but for the first time in a long time, they've caught Nvidia and are genuinely offering a better value product, depending on your preferences. Which makes it really odd because nowadays, it seems like those sides have flipped. The 6800 XT, though it performs the same and is from AMD, a brand that is typically seen as the value brand, $50 more. It's literally the reverse of how the 6800 XT started. And this could really mean that people are valuing 6800 XTs more than we're valuing 3080s nowadays. I feel like we need to check out some games to get to the bottom of this. A little unconventionally, I'm gonna show you some ray tracing benchmarks first. Obviously a lot of us know AMD graphics cards kind of get destroyed by Nvidia in ray tracing. Although Fortnite here is kind of the exception, only an 11% decrease. Move on to Minecraft ray tracing. <laughs> yeah, the 6800 XT gets destroyed. <laughs> More of the reason I'm starting out with ray tracing here is because this is one of Nvidia's leading features. So it's weird to see an Nvidia graphics card that is way more capable at ray tracing than an AMD option going for less money on the used market. It doesn't really make sense, does it? Also in Cyberpunk here at 1440p RT Ultra preset, we can see that the RTX 3080 has some weird frame time problems. You can see the 1% lows, which are on the far right, particularly very low in this case compared to even what AMD is offering with the 6800 XT. Things get even more interesting when you introduce Nvidia's DLSS upscaler to this equation, because now you see in Cyberpunk that a lot of those issues just went away and it's not magic, but this is going to be very important for later. On the topic of DLSS, that's another reason why the 3080 going for less than the 6800 XT is kind of surprising because AMD's alternative upscaler FSR just doesn't look as good as Nvidia's DLSS. This is probably because Nvidia is using AI to upscale while AMD is just using an, a, a general algorithm to do the same thing. Even a very new implementation of FSR in Remnant 2 shows a lot of ghosting and sizzliness and DLSS doesn't have the same issues. Okay, other than ray tracing and DLSS, let's focus on the thing that most of you guys are probably buying GPUs for, and that is rasterization in games. I just wanna get it upfront with you guys with both of these GPUs, it is amazing. I love both of them because they are so freaking fast, which I guess puts me in a bad position because at 1080p, they are limited by my CPU. And mind you, I don't even have a slow CPU. I have a Ryzen 5900X in my system. I guess it's not fast enough. So with that in mind, I hope it's understandable. I'm going to skip past the 1080p results and move straight to 1440p rasterized tests. And here in Fortnite, 1440p, epic settings, no nanite, no lumen, no hardware ray tracing. The 3080 is pulling ahead pretty significantly. But in a really interesting turn of events, if you switch on Lumen for Unreal Engine 5, which kind of simulates ray tracing to some degree, the AMD graphics card actually pulls ahead. So looking possibly in the future with more games using Unreal Engine 5 and Lumen as the lighting system, the poor ray tracing performance on AMD graphics cards might not be that big of a deal. In Red Dead Redemption 2, I think this is max settings. I just turned that one setting slider in the game all the way to max. But the 6800 XT does pull 12% ahead here. On both GPUs, the 1% lows are kind of bad. I would show you high settings in Remnant 2, but I guess Unreal Engine 5 is just the bane of my existence because it is also CPU limited with my 5900X. But if we do up the settings to ultra at 1440p, we do get a more accurate result. And the 6800 XT pulls ahead by about 8% in this case. Is this a trend? Not exactly, but 
in most cases, the 6800 XT is a little bit faster than the RTX 3080, which maybe could explain the price premium on the used market, but I think there's a little bit more to this. In Cyberpunk, both of these cards are pretty neck and neck, but you might want to take a closer look at how much VRAM each GPU is using. Last of Us Part 1 is another example. Look, the RTX 3080 only has 10 gigabytes of VRAM, and you can see over on the 6800 XT side, it is using over 11 gigabytes. Obviously, the 3080 is having to limit itself and offload some of that VRAM to system RAM. As you see, the system RAM on the 3080 side is a little bit higher. 10 gigabytes can be limiting on the RTX 3080 if you want to up your textures and also ray tracing typically uses more VRAM as well. Now, this is the reason in Cyberpunk, when we went to the RT Ultra preset, the game was more stuttery than it probably should have been. It's actually because the 3080 was running out of VRAM at 1440p. But it also explains when we turned on DLSS quality, it lowered the VRAM usage by rendering at a lower resolution, and it helped to mitigate the frame stutters and actually give a very nice playable performance. Yeah, the 10 gigabytes of VRAM on the RTX 3080 I think is why people are selling these like hotcakes on the used market. In fact, they're an amazing price right now. If you want to pick up an RTX 3080, a lot of games nowadays are pushing 10 gigabytes pretty frequently. And if you are planning to keep a graphics card down the line, that VRAM could definitely be an issue. But this might be kind of a hot take on this whole VRAM situation. I don't think that the extra six gigabytes of VRAM that you get on the 6800 XT is actually all that big of a deal. The real reason is because VRAM isn't the entire GPU. That's where I don't want you to get me wrong though, 16 gigabytes of VRAM on the 6800 XT is awesome. It's so cool to just be able to max out textures or settings in a game and never have to worry about how much VRAM you have on the back end. But I wanna say with the RTX 3080 and it's 10 gigabytes of VRAM, the NVIDIA feature advantage is definitely still there. Ray tracing, I know that many of us will talk about it and it's like, oh, it's unusable and stuff like that for most people. But at an RTX 3080 level of performance, ray tracing is actually a compelling option. And on top of that, as we talked about earlier, DLSS is also a superior upscaler. So if you're in games and you need to upscale it for whatever reason. You know, a lot of the times you can actually just turn it on quality mode at 1440p and notice no visual difference whatsoever. Sometimes it will even improve the visuals in a game with both minimal visual impact, almost get free FPS. But sadly, I just can't say the same thing about AMD's FSR. FSR just did not look good in it. There's a lot of ghosting, a lot of sizzliness in the textures and things. On top of that, it's also sad to say, using DLSS also helps with VRAM issues. Now I'm talking about DLSS upscaling, not frame generation or anything like that. The 3080 doesn't have that. But NVIDIA does offer better encoders for H.264, which you have to use H.264 if you're streaming to Twitch. Other than that though, H.264 isn't really used that commonly. Most people are using H.265, otherwise known as HEVC for recording video. And on HEVC, both the 3080 and the 6800 XT are pretty neck and neck, but the 3080 does pull ahead a lot of the time. And one more thing that the RTX 3080 has that the 6800 XT can't also say it has, CUDA support and productivity apps and better AI performance for whatever you guys use AI for, I don't even know. With all the better ray tracing, DLSS, NVENC encoders, CUDA and AI support, all of that adds up to kind of diminish the benefit on the 6800 XT to having six more gigabytes of VRAM, especially when you look on the used market in NVIDIA's RTX 3080 is going for less than the 6800 XT, generally speaking. Although there is one more reason you might consider the 6800 XT over the RTX 3080, and that would be power consumption. The 6800 XT from my testing, I tested the overall power consumption of my PC while just standing still in Remnant 2. The 6800 XT reports in MSI Afterburner that it is drawing less power than the RTX 3080, but if you take a look at the power from the wall of the overall system, they're actually about the same. So the 6800 XT misreports its power draw just by a little bit. But the story can change quite a bit when you go to the new market, because unlike the RTX 3080, you can't really find these brand new 
new anymore. You kind of have to search on the used market. But the 6800 XTs, you can still find brand new right now for about 520 bucks. It is actually competing directly with NVIDIA's brand new RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte which <laughs> they haven't stocked this thing up a whole lot. There's only a few models available, but this thing is $500. And at $500, the 6800 XT destroys the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. Let me move my, my camera over here. Ooh. You'd have to jump to the RTX 4070, which is a 12 gigabyte graphics card, and you can get it for about $590 right now. Now for $80 more than the 6800 XT, I'm not gonna sit here and say that the 4070 is a a great deal or anything but this might be a little controversial i would personally take the 4070 over the 6800 xt because generally speaking these cards perform really similarly but the rtx 4070 has all of those same advantages that the rtx 3080 does plus as two more gigabytes of vram and you get frame generation AV1 encoding, we will have to wait and see until the RX 7800 XT drops if it does present good value at this price point, especially with the AV1 encoder as well. One other thing, let me find this real quick. Better power consumption than the 6800 XT. You can see the 6800 XT is 427 watts, while the 30, well, no, no, while the 4070 is only at 318 watts on this list. So you're drawing almost 100 watts less power just for you know, the same performance. Yeah, the 4070, I think does justify $80 more on top of the 6800 XT. It does suck to lose four gigabytes of VRAM. It's not necessarily like every single person is going to use every single NVIDIA feature. One of these features is going to pique your eye and maybe multiple, which can make you make the jump to it. So if you do have the same gaming performance with an AMD GPU and an NVIDIA GPU, with AMD, it seems like you typically get more VRAM than what NVIDIA is offering you, which is one of the sneaky tactics that NVIDIA also does is kind of force you to upgrade your graphics card in the future because it becomes artificially obsolete because of the VRAM that it has in it. And in some cases, the VRAM can be a more compelling option. If you look on the market, honestly, the 6700 XT from AMD is probably their best, most compelling option at $320 because the 6700 XT has 12 gigabytes of VRAM when all the cards that surround it only have eight. It's gonna be interesting with the 6800 XT because it really depends how much of a discount you are paying for an AMD card to make it worth it. I actually got this specific 6800 XT for $550 because it is the only one that could fit in my case. You might be wondering why did I actually get my 6800 XT on the used market? But the value of 6800 XTs are a little funky. Uh, AMD graphics cards right now are be being bundled with Starfield. And you get the 6800 XT, you get bundled the $100 premium edition of this game. Is it valued actually at $100? I don't really know. It's gonna come out to about the same price as anything on the used market, so why wouldn't I just buy it new? You might be wondering if you were to buy a high-end AMD GPU or a high-end NVIDIA GPU like a 3080 or 6800 XT, is there major differences between the coolers between these GPUs? That's something you should be concerned about. The Red Devil 6800 800 XT performs really well. It's very quiet. Here's some tests up on the screen that I ran. They allowed the cards to boost up as far as they could. Also, the Red Devil comes with a metal back plate. They gotta have some thermal pads back there or something because this baby is pretty warm. Pretty nice plastic shroud. It is plastic, just to let you know. Asus Tough RTX 3080 that I have in my hands here is all metal all around. Also, the power color Red Devil does have a little LED switch. Ooh. Now, one downside to the Red Devil is it's kind of in the name. The lights are only red. This Red Devil 6800 XT is absolutely ginormous. When I went to go plug it in for the first time, damn near had a heart attack because I thought I put it in the slot wrong. Stay right there. Can't even fit my knife in there. That was a weird noise. I think I have a pretty normal size case and this uh, Red Devil card could barely fit in it. The Tough 3080 is a little bit smaller. Buying a high-end GPU from a brand like AMD that is typically seen as the value brand. I wanted to make this to basically overcome that fear is the 6800 XT performs really well. 
though if you're spending a lot of money on a graphics card i do think generally speaking you would spend a little bit more for extra features on an nvidia graphics card amd is kind of a hard sell in the higher price bracket. Now that I own an RTX 3080 and an RX 6800 XT, which perform very similar in games, and I'm happy with how they both perform in editing as well, but you might be wondering, which of these graphics cards am I going to be using in my rig? These are the fastest graphics cards that I own, and the answer? might surprise you. Yeah, I'm gonna be using the 6800 XT. For me personally, the ray tracing on the RTX 3080, I don't really use it a whole lot. The extra VRAM that's on the 6800 XT does give it a, an advantage when I'm editing. I'm gonna use 6800 XT in my rig. I guess you could also say with the 6800 XT that AMD's adrenaline software then the driver experience is just better than Nvidia's uh, GeForce experience. That is completely true. Adrenaline is just kind of better in every way. But adrenaline isn't a major selling point to me. I just kind of like, hey, it's it's, it's cool to have better software, but I'm not gonna buy a graphics card for the in built-in driver software. If I really want something, I'll use a third-party app. Anyways, though, that's all I got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.